Hi, I'm Peter Ollett. I'm from Sheffield Hallam University. I'm going to talk to you about uh, partially automated assessment. So uh, what do I mean by that? What I mean is I mean an assessment where the questions are set by an automated question generator and then completed by students and marked in the usual way. I've put by hand here. It, of course, these days, often it might be electronic submission. It might be on screen annotation or whatever it is, but um, you know, not marked by an automated assessment system. Now, why? Why would we do that? Well, I think that um, a lot of the advantages of e-assessment in certain ways comes come from the um, automated question setting, the fact that you can put in random um, parameters into questions which generate different questions for each student. I might particularly be thinking of that in terms of um, collusion and dissuading students from uh, collusion in terms of uh, you know good academic conduct and so on and so forth. Um, and I think that some of the disadvantages of e-assessment come from the automated marking. So I can only ask things that the automated marking system can uh, can evaluate and uh, problems like that. Uh, there are also some issues, I think less so as time goes on with student input, students have to be able to you know, interface with the system and get their meaning across in an in a unambiguous way and so on and so forth. They have to be able to type the right thing or click the right thing or whatever it is. Uh, yeah, so so um, why why is this important then? I'm sort of imagining a scenario where if you've got a piece of coursework and you're worried about academic conduct issues or collusion, what have you, um, I'm imagining a couple of different things that you could do about that. One is that you could turn it into an exam. Okay, well, if it was a piece of coursework that was quite open and quite gave students lots of time to sort of think about it and write a little report as part of their answers or or whatever it was, by turning it into an exam, you're probably going for more closed form questions. You're certainly going for a much condensed time frame, and you're basically turning it into a different sort of assi assessment. Um, and so that, I think, might affect the validity of what you're trying to do if what you're going for is what what might be called the, an authentic assessment sort of system you know you're you're trying to ask them questions in a certain way and you're being forced to do something different by the format of the of the assessment being an examination the other thing that you can do is you could make the question make the assignment be any assessment and then you can generate random uh, numbers for each, each student and things like this the problem with that then is you've got you can only ask what the automated marking system can uh, mark so what i'm trying to argue is that this sort of halfway house system where you set using a computer but you mark in the usual way might be able to maintain the validity of a more sort of open-ended piece of coursework while increasing the reliability with respect to uh, dissuading students from collusion. Anyway, I wrote about this. Uh, there's the link. You can get the paper. Um, you can see what you think. The point of today's talk, then, is to give you a, a demonstration of the sort of thing that I'm talking about. So the idea is that students are each given an individual question sheet. What I tend to do, because it's just easy, is make a file uh, named after each student username and just say, click on the one that's your username, and that's your question sheet. That seems to work quite well. There are uh, The students then uh, attempt and submit their solutions in the usual way, and uh, I mark it. It's marking is similar to usual, except um, you're making reference to the student's individualized answers rather than a, a single combined answer sheet. Uh, that definitely takes a bit longer. I don't think it's dreadful. It's basically the situation where, you know, you can't just memorize that question 1C is 12.7 and just keep ticking. Uh, you know, you, ha you sometimes have to. But actually, the format of the questions is still very similar. There's a similar sort of structure um, to what the students have, have expected to have written. So you can you can mostly just get the rhythm of it. You might just occasionally need to check for specific details of their answers. OK, how do you do this? There are lots of ways to do this. One is in a data driven context, you can give students exactly the same questions and an individualized data set or invite them to generate an individualized data set. And that's grand. Uh, in a computational context, perhaps the student can uh, write some parameter into their code uh, as a random seed, something like that, maybe their student number, something that you can reproduce, as you, you see. But if you're not giving them data and you're not having them interface in you know with some computer package in itself 
there are lots of other ways to achieve this. So I've, I mean, you can do randomization just in LaTeX. I've done it in Lua, uh, which is a little programming language that runs through uh, Lua LaTeX. I've just done it where I've written a Python file that generates questions for students. So that that sort of thing. So there are lots of ways to do it. What I'm going to show you today is something that's quite easy to get started with because it's built into Numbers. It's already there. Numbers has a printable worksheet theme. So what I need to do is uh, quickly show you um, a modeling scenario. So imagine that I've got this. Imagine I've got a cylinder of water. See how good I am at drawing cylinders. A cylinder of water. The water level is up to there. Say the height of the water is H. Uh, the diameter of the tank I'm going to call DT. And then what's happening is in the bottom of the tank, there is a hole and the water is draining out of the tank through a hole in the bottom. And the diameter of the hole is uh, dh, d hole. OK, so if I think about this, I can work out uh, a formula for the volume of water in the tank at the moment because it's just a cylinder. Um, so it's pi r squared h. So the radius is uh, dt over 2 squared times the current height, where height is a function of time. So if I want to work out the rate of change of volume, I just differentiate this. Well, the first stuff is all constants. So this just sits where it is. And then I dh by dt. So I now have a formula for um, the rate of change of volume in the tank. I can also think of the rate of change of volume in the tank from the point of view of the amount that's falling out of the hole in the bottom. OK, so the, the rate of change of volume would be the amount that's coming in minus the amount that's going out. Nothing is coming in, so we just have minus the amount that's going out. And that's going to depend on the um, area of the hole in the bottom, the pi dh over 2 squared. And that's going to be times by the rate at which water's falling through this hole. And there's a law that says that's uh, root of 2gh. Okay, so now I've got two formulas for dv by dt. Um, they're measuring the same thing, so I can equate them. If I equate those two things to each other, I then end up with an ordinary differential equation in h, because I've got an h in here, and I've got a dh by dt up here. So I can solve that. I can then um, find an expression fairly easily for the root of h anyway. Um, and then I can rearrange that for t and work out, for example, the time at which the uh, tank will be empty. By, uh, by setting h or root h to 0, I can then find out what time that, that will happen, that sort of thing. So that's my sort of basic modeling scenario. What I'm going to do is, first of all, show you quickly um, uh, how to make these sort of randomized questions. So if I go uh, make a quick demo question, right. In the question statement, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to write that scenario because that's going to take too long. Just imagine I'm trying to do something. I just want to show you that it's possible to do randomized parameters in questions that come through into a printable worksheet. So I'm just going to type a question out quickly. You can see over on the right that it's appearing. Maybe I can make that a bit bigger, that it's appearing as I type. So I've got the integral of I'm going to start with a constant called B, which I haven't defined, times x times, oops, the card of, no, the cosine of some a x squared that, and then I'm going to put dx at the end. Okay, that's my question. You can see there are two points in that question, a and b, where I've got <clears throat> what are going to be randomized parameters. Numbers has realized that, and it's got this warning on what it, it calls it variables. So variables has a warning. It says, oh, you've used a and b, and I don't know what those are. So, for example, I might tell it that A is um, a random number between, I don't know, 2 and 10, something like that. B, um, depending on how kind I was feeling, uh, I could do something to make the algebra a bit easier with the students. So I could say, let's have a random number from 2 to 10 oops, and times it by A. So that A is a multiple of B. That just makes some numbers fall out of the uh, problem at the end. So if you see, it just generates different numbers. Now what I need to do 
uh, is to put this in an exam. I create an exam over here. I go like that. I add a question group. I add a question to the group. I use the question that I just wrote. The, other, the important thing, this is the important thing in the demo, is that you go to display and you change the theme. The interface theme doesn't want to be standard because it's not going to display online. It wants to be printable worksheet. There, I'm done. If I now click run, it'll run. And here's what happens. It says, how many sheets do you want to generate? So I'll generate six. And there they are. Um, if I now, um, if you look at it, it's 4x cos 2x squared. If I just scroll through, you, you might just see that these are changing, that these numbers are changing. OK, so I'm getting different questions for different students. That's the idea. The big version, the here's one I prepared earlier, is this um, modeling scenario that I was talking about. So here, maybe I'll say, generate me 10 of these. And there they are. So what I've got here is I've got my tank of water. It's generated a diameter for the tank. It's generated a diameter for the hole. And it's generated a height for the water in the tank. And uh, it's asked me some questions. So the first thing that I did when I was showing you a minute ago was I got V in terms of H and then differentiated it. I then also thought about the outflow and found a different formula for V. So it's kind of guiding them through the thing that I just did. Solve the ODE. Then I've got this, which is not the sort of thing you'd often put in an e-assessment. Uh, which is briefly outright, outlined the parameters of the model, the impact on time taken for the tank to empty. Then I've got show that the tank is empty after 996.3 seconds. And then I've got write a brief report sharing your findings using appropriate units and accuracy. I put in the original context that it's your employer that's asking you this question for some reason that isn't explained. Uh, but it's to give it the idea that you can ask more open-ended and deeper things maybe than you would do if it was just questions and answers. And the important thing then is that if I scroll through these, you might notice that these numbers are changing. So a big tank, a small tank, a smaller one, a bigger one again. And then every time these are changing, the time it takes to empty is being calculated anew. I can also uh, generate an answer sheet. So um, in the question setting, what I do is I would put that under um, Sorry, I came out of that, didn't I? If I'm editing the question, I put the answer under advice. So where you would sometimes put advice, like hints and things like that, in this case, you put the answer. And if I show uh, the answer sheets, then what I get is uh, the answers for each student. And again, if I scroll through, I get the answers for the different students. OK. Um, there are some other uses. I'll finish quickly. There are some other uses for the numbers principal worksheet theme. Uh, In-class worksheets, I imagine it's you know, a good idea to give students uh, different questions so they can talk about the method that they're using rather than, you know, this thing where they, oh, I, how did you get seven? I didn't get seven. Can I just see what you did? Well, now you've got to talk about the method because your answer isn't the same as my answer. Um, I found that quite good. Um, Printing e-assessments, it might be a student has a particular need that they need to look at an e-assessment from a bit of paper. It might be for quality assurance, things like this. Um, printable worksheets can also, they don't have to be, you know, delivered as a PDF document or whatever, or, or printed out. They can be delivered via the VLE through the numbers interface. And that opens up the possibility of a mixed uh, assessment where some of the questions are marked by e-assessment and some of them are marked by hand. And I seem to have closed a bracket there that I didn't start. Anyway, I'm going to stop there and uh, very happy to take any questions uh, that anybody has. Thank you very much for listening.